for celebration of Holy Eucharist Rite 1 for the fourth Sunday of Advent begins on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hymn number 53. Let us pray. We beseech thee, Almighty God, to purify our consciences by thy daily visitation, that when thy Son, our Lord, cometh, he may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please turn to Canticle 15, found in your bulletins, or on page 91 of the prayer book. We will read it together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud from their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but now is disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. 
to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn number 56, verses 7 and 8. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to thee, o Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We will hear that gospel next Sunday, in the first chapter of St. John. And 
In the biblical language, that phrase, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, the idiom is more like God pitched a tent and stayed with us for a while. A tent that was humble and yet sufficient for God's purposes. I wonder if that same kind of tent that happened at the Incarnation, when God became one of us in the person of Jesus, I wonder if that tent is similar to the tent and tabernacle that we heard about in the second lesson, or the second book from Samuel this morning, where David wanted to build God a splendid house, a house of cedar. God, through the prophet Nathan, tells David that God has dwelt in tent and tabernacle ever since they ventured out of bondage in Egypt. God does not need a house of cedar. Now God would relent, and David's son Solomon would build a grand temple, a grand place for God to dwell, for the tabernacle to rest, and that temple was destroyed, that house was destroyed ransacked by one enemy of the people. Some centuries later, another temple was built, this one around the time of Jesus' birth. Herod the Great built a grand temple, a grand place for God's tabernacle, and that temple was also destroyed, sacked by an enemy. I wonder if the sufficiency and the humility of God dwelling in tent and tabernacle isn't really God's plan for us all along. God knows we are a busy people and we love to build things. But I wonder if there is something about the humility and the sufficiency of tent and tabernacle. We have been in this time of pandemic, largely absent from, or at least minimally using, our buildings. God has resided in tents and tabernacle in a way that is more scattered, perhaps, than we are used to when we come into grand places such as this one here from where I am speaking this morning. And yet I wonder if there isn't something about tent and tabernacle, about sufficiency and humility that God is trying to tell us. When it was time for God to visit us, for the Word to become flesh, God pitched a tent for a while. The tent and tabernacle where God first chose to dwell was in the womb of a virgin, the blessed virgin Mary. A tent and tabernacle of humility and of sufficiency. God chooses, I believe, to dwell in each of us now. We each are tents and tabernacle. Temples, yes, of the Holy Spirit, that suggests a grander sort of edifice. But I suggest tent and tabernacle represents the humility and the sufficiency that is good enough for God, and if it is good enough for God, perhaps it should be good enough for us. And what an honor, what a grace, what a blessing, each of us, to be tent and tabernacle. Now this Advent, we do not spend our time preparing for Christmas. The secular world would have us do that, counting down the days until Santa Claus comes and leaves a bunch of presents under our tree, perhaps. We Christians, at least we Episcopalians, don't worry about Christmas until Christmas gets here. The season of Advent is a season of preparation for the second coming of Jesus, whenever that will be. That has been our purpose these last four weeks. And when Jesus comes the second time, it won't be in tent and tabernacle. We are promised that it will be in strength and power and great glory, something that we scarcely can imagine. But in that interim time, 
this long advent that we are in, this two millennia now advent that we are in, and who knows how much longer it will go. In this advent, perhaps God indeed does choose to dwell in us. May we be both tent and tabernacle, a place of humility and sufficiency, where God chooses to dwell now until the day when Jesus comes back in triumph and in power. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able to affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that we have seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and Father, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten. Prayers of the people are found on page 328 of the prayer books. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world, responding, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church and the vestry, staff, and people of this parish with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Dan, our rector, and Joseph, our seminarian, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly minister thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present in person and online, that with meek hearts and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, President of the United States, Joseph, President elect, Gretchen, Governor of Michigan, and Sheldon, Mayor of Flint. 
that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph the Worker, her spouse, St. Paul, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all things, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's in person and online. If you are worshiping with us this morning on Facebook Live or if you are tuning in later to the recording, you are welcome here. It is good even if we can't be all together in body, Technology gives us the ability to be together in spirit, and of course it is God's grace that binds us all together in God's love with God and each other in Christ. As I prepare the altar for Holy Communion, know that you are welcome to receive the sacrament. If you are here in person, you will receive it materially. If you are worshiping with us online, you may receive it spiritually. In participating in this service, in this Eucharist, um, you have prepared yourself, you have heard God's word broken open, you have professed your faith, you have put your prayers before God who loves you, 
You have confessed your sins before God, who is merciful. Now all that remains is for you to ask Jesus, as he is present in the Blessed Sacrament, to fill you with his grace, his love, and his mercy. Our offertory hymn is number 66. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Continue with Eucharistic Prayer 2, page 340. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory 
of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Returning to page 336. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Dear Lord, our Son of the Feast. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. Within thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always in thy mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink in his blood, that we may never run from the hand of him. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
In Jesus, we believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. We love you above all things, and we long for you in our souls. Since during this pandemic, some cannot now receive you materially, so please come spiritually into their hearts. As though you have already come, we embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Turn with me to hymn number 54.
339 of the prayer book. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank you for that thou dost see us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious love of our love of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who doth assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of true hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship to do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.